Yo guys, what's up? As requested, I'm going to review the video called How to make women beg for S even if you're ugly by How to Beast. Ready? Here are the facts, bro. I'm never ready for your stupidity. Bro. Men, we find women attractive primarily based on their look. Yes, we find women attractive based on their looks because that's what attraction is. It's the same for women and that's because that's how human beings work. That's how animals in general function. You cannot find something else besides looks attractive because that's literally what attraction is about. You can only find somebody attractive if they are attractive. It's about attractiveness. You are supposed to literally attract somebody to you. It's always about looks. That's what attractiveness is about. I don't know how to make it any clear that's right that's what we optimize for in a partner and because of that a lot of us have yes and you want to be together with somebody you want to have a partner because you want to reproduce with them again it's about looks attractiveness this internal bias and we think that we need to become more attractive to get attention from the women that you won't become more attractive by going to the gym if that's what you're trying to imply with this video but of course if you're genetically attractive naturally then uh, women will be more attracted to you. Yes, if you're attractive, then women will be attracted to you, as in you will pull them in. That's what attractiveness is about. It's about your looks. Oh my God, I don't know what the hell he's gonna say in this video, but it's already ridiculous. We want. Instead, it is important to understand how to become more desirable to women, how to make them crave a- Desirable, he stands there with his car. Is he gonna say that you need to get a good car? to attract women or what nonsense, some red pill garbage again. Attraction is always about the way you look like, but a woman could also desire a better life, especially if she's brainwashed or comes from poverty, which is why she would choose a man, not based on actual looks, as in love, but she would choose him because he has a lot of so-called money, and uh, then she can uh, get better food, uh, a big house, a car, whatever. None of which has to do with the actual feelings for you. She will feel nothing for you. She will be cold to you or maybe sometimes will act as if she's attracted to you and wants to sleep with you, but it will always be fake and an act. She will never actually be attracted to you. This desire for something external, superficial, could of course be there. But that's not what anybody wants. It's on a deeper level, not just think that we're attractive or cute. And that's the reason that when you spot a super hot girl, whether it's on Instagram or out at the gym or the restaurant and she's with her. No girl at the gym really looks attractive. They all look too skinny or muscular. Boyfriend or her husband, he is almost never a pretty boy. No, instead he is optimized for the following. He's never a pretty boy? Uh, where's the example for this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that in real life whatsoever. What I see are beautiful women together with beautiful guys. And that's because they understand that they are able to get this beautiful guy. Whereas average women will settle with average guys. Of course, that's just how it goes. It depends on your face for the most part and also your height and uh, other features. It's as if he's trying to imply that if a woman marries you, that she finds you attractive, that she desires you for who you are. No, of course not. A woman could marry you because she wants to get your money and then later she will divorce you. Read about all of the stories of men who don't get any S in their marriage. And that's because the woman doesn't actually love you. She doesn't actually find you attractive. And that's the kind of relationship or marriage that no man wants. Why do you even give this advice to men even though no man wants to achieve this? Factors. Number one the hunter-gatherer. So for basically all of human existence up until recently, community- Yes, we come from apes, of course. Communities relied on men to go out and hunt and gather the food so that they could survive. And this kind of helps explain the biological differences between men and women. Men would go out and hunt, women would birth the children and maintain the home. Now, obviously we're living in the year 2023 where women can do whatever the f they want to do, right? But even if you ask a modern woman, nine out of 10 of them are going to tell you that they want a man who they can feel safe and secure with. They want a man who can protect and provide. Yes, and that's because it's human nature. That doesn't go away because it's 2023. Even decades of feminist program can't change this shit. Now the question becomes, how do you immediately convey this type of energy when you first meet a girl? Because this is going to trigger a lot deeper level of attraction than just being 
a hot guy. Well, aside from being physically fit and learning how to fight, which are important. Human beings don't even look like that in nature. Look at any tribes, just anybody who actually lives in nature. They may be better developed skeleton wise, that's for sure, which is going to make you way stronger than muscles. But of course, this guy's also short, which is why he's trying to compensate. And that's why you would feel more protected if you're together with a guy who's naturally strong, as in tall with big bones, not muscle. Muscle is usually just a form of compensation nowadays. You stress your body to adapt to lifting man-made metal in a man-made gym. That's not attractive even if you want to see it as attractive. Your tattoos are also not going to help. Importance. There is something else you can do that any guy can do to immediately make this happen. All you have to do is become the type of guy who makes the first move quickly and then continues to escalate things from there. And that means that you no longer can have this mindset of, man, I wish I could just meet, you know, the perfect girl. All I Why don't you show all of the footage of ugly guys trying exactly this and how they fail at it? Why show a scene from a Hollywood movie? You need to meet as one girl, bro. If it could be a friend of a friend or, you know, the next girl I match with on dating apps, I'm just tired of doing this whole dating thing and facing rejection. You can't keep thinking like that, bro. That is literally the mindset that's making you unattractive. Because when you approach the girl... A mindset cannot make you unattractive. None of the stuff that the Red Pillars talk about can make you unattractive. Because if a guy is attractive, then he's gonna attract other girls. No matter if he's shy, if he's nervous, or whatever his attractiveness will attract anyway. It looks like he's the same height as the women. He probably wears the head to make himself look a little bit taller. It could be worse. And then you quickly schedule the date. You don't waste a bunch of time texting. Then you escalate things physically on the date as well. Guess what? Not only do those things make you seem more confident because you could approach and the other guy couldn't approach, it is a lot fucking deeper than that. It makes the woman understand immediately that you are the type of man who is a leader. You are the type of man who can protect. He looks incredibly old. We are the same age and... Uh... It's just crazy. He looks like he's in his 40s, basically. Number two, kill the bitch voice. So ready, we're gonna do something. I'm gonna start to breathe just from my, my throat here, and I'm gonna start to not project my voice. I'm gonna start to talk only as if I was talking to, to the laptop here. And, and how does this make me start to seem? You know, maybe I also become a little bit uh, fidgety. I, I can't hold eye contact, and I'm kind of talking like this, and I'm starting to feel like I have this weird voice. I meet guys who speak like this all the fucking time. I used to speak like this in my past. Hey, what's up, guys? When you speak like this, it doesn't matter how smooth you are with the words you say. You could say the perfect thing at the perfect time, make the move at the perfect time. But I always get the, like, the chai tea latte. You're still gonna seem like a little bitch boy. Like how girls feel when they're in your presence, that is a whole lot more important than how you physically look. And that There's something to this in the sense that if you would, of course, have high testosterone, then your voice would be deeper for one thing, which naturally attracts. And if your voice was super high and uh, if your testosterone was generally low, then you would uh, probably be a lot more... Uh, nervous which doesn't mean that you wouldn't be able to attract somebody in the first place but it could be a problem later on then again if you have high testosterone if you're genetically gifted then um, you will most likely look good anyway it's almost always people who fail biologically anyway who have these problems in the first place put your hand on your belly and then just feel your belly rise and fall as you breathe slowly and deeply when you're activating that full diaphragm muscle you're also going to start to speak from your belly and beyond that you also have to project your voice so if i'm talking to someone who's standing right here i'm going to talk as if i'm talking to someone who's standing you know twice that distance away not like i'm screaming to the guy across the balcony that'd be a bit odd it's going to take some time it's going to take some practice but be aware about it and also be aware when you're talking to other men because you can feel the same energy you're going to start to realize i have high voice you tell me Damn, that guy's a bitch-ass voice. There's no one right answer for him. I'm not even saying that this is not gonna work in some scenarios, but the problem is that if you're not naturally like this because of your height, you had some other insecurities, whatever, then you're just gonna be faking it. And uh, a woman is gonna notice that sooner or later anyway, maybe in some scenarios to get the one-night stand, this could actually in some way help you. Sure, but do you want to live a fake life? Uh, do you want to fake your confidence, fake that you're naturally like this, even though you know that you're not. It's just this guy who bleached his teeth or whatever he did to his teeth, has all of these tattoos. A lot of people said that he's on steroids, he probably is, which is why his skin looks so bad, which also makes you unattractive. Who now tries to act as if he's this tough guy or whatever, who even changes his voice just to appeal to women. Um, that's not gonna be attractive in the long run anyway. Just for a one night stand, maybe in some scenarios, when you meet a girl who's um, insecure and uh, doesn't have anything better to do. 
Damn, that guy's got a boss voice. Now look, these next few tips are extremely powerful in helping you be immediately desirable to a girl. But you have to realize if you don't understand how to operate and move things forward, even if a girl likes you at first, you will always fucking lose the girl. I'm sure a lot of y'all have experienced this. You've met a girl who seems like she's into you, and then she goes cold. And that's why I want to let you know that I am here to help you with my Beast Dating Coaching Program. For the program, I'd only been on one date my entire life. I had next to zero experience across the board. Yes, and that's because of your looks. You were never able to naturally attract women to you because you are not particularly attractive. And that's why you found how to be in all of these retro people and whatever, all these dating coaches, you are their best customer. But after having been in the program for some time, you know, I've been on. Yeah. And you sound really motivated and you sound like you really learned a lot. It sounds like your life is a lot better now. Probably almost 30 dates. I've had weeks where it's been two to three dates a week. To be able to connect with women has actually, you know, deepened the quality of experience of my own life and just is opening up more doors as I go along. Being a man in his early 30s, I ultimately wanted to get in a serious relationship with the high quality women, which I currently am in right now. Oh my God, man. Okay, at the end, I actually felt sorry for the first guy. This whole community is just messed up. They're really lying to people. This guy is in his early 30s. He's not attractive. What kind of a quality woman did he find? What did this guy teach him? How to be desired for what? Uh, maybe money? I don't know. I, who the hell knows? The program completely changed my life. I love this program. I owe so much to it. So look, hundreds and hundreds of guys just like this have gone through this program. That being said, if you want to learn more, see more testimonials and apply now, you can go to beastcoaching.com or click that first link. Beastcoaching.com. How normal guys are unlocking their hidden confidence, hidden confidence, attracting top tier women in less than 60 days. In less than 60 days. Wow. I'm unattractive. Uh, I'm just going to pay this guy and then I'm going to be attractive all of a sudden. I'm going to get all of these uh, hot women. <laughs> oh my God. Show me how. I want to see how. Right here. Yeah. Click below to fill out your application. Apply now. Oh yeah, wow. I could be this guy. I could be together with this girl. What's your name? Hi there, my name is David. You may know me as a YouTuber with over 1 million subscribers, but not long ago I was in your shoes. Yeah, he's a good businessman. I'm gonna give it to him. He probably charges, what, um, a few thousand maybe for the 60 day uh, transformation or whatever. It's probably not only a few hundred realistically, and men are gonna pay that. Number three, stop pleasing her. Oh, okay, you don't wanna do what I wanna do? I'll just do what you wanna do then. And the whole date, it just kind of felt like I was trying to like prove myself to her. And after that, I never fucking did that shit again. I never met the girl halfway or I went over to her place. No, it was always in my neighborhood. And look, it's not about being a hardo who's trying to push the girl around and bend her to your will. It is about setting a strong frame to look. I'm the leader here. Because when you let girls lead a relationship, they will always lead you straight out the fucking door. Or if they don't lead you out the there's for sure a natural side to this in the sense that yes, you should be the leader as he said himself and um, you should not, um, not necessarily please her. Of course, women want to be pleased and that's completely normal. They want you to take the initiative, show your so-called strength. Um, yes, it's about uh, leading. The door, they're gonna lead you straight over in into the friend zone over there. A strong sexual dynamic where the girl is craving you and desiring you, it never ever happens with the 50-50 relationship. And that's why you gotta ask yourself, why would you let a girl lead? If the girl said, hey, could we? No, of course you shouldn't let uh, a girl lead. And that's because it's unnatural. That would never happen. Literally in nature, you would be the leader. Men have better orientation naturally. That's just how it is. This has been proven. Women are the ones that follow. In nature, literally, they follow you with the children and uh, the man has better orientation. He's stronger, faster and so on. He's just better at it. That's just how it's supposed to be. And that's why it still appeals because as I said, no matter where we live, no matter what year it is, our nature doesn't change. We just meet halfway. Why would you agree to that? It's because you are afraid that if you say no, you might lose the girl. I was afraid that if I said no to- Yes, of course, he's right about that essentially. You shouldn't try to appeal to her just because you're afraid that she's gonna say no. If she's actually attracted to you, then she's gonna go even to a different country, realistically. But uh, if she's not, if she's not really into you, then uh, she will say, I don't really wanna go out. Okay, maybe let's just meet somewhere here. 
close to where I am. And if you go to her, and if you even travel a far distance just to get to her, then um, come on, it's already all set out to fail. Number four, no pretty boy shit. So when it comes to our haircut and our facial hair, there's some very clear and easy decisions we can make to portray this type of hunter-gatherer energy. So with your haircut, the easiest thing to do is to always get a fade from bald. If you what are you talking about? What fade? That's what modern slaves do. A man in nature always has long hair, and uh, women also do, and that's because human beings in nature in general let their hair grow, and men also have a long beard. How are you even really gonna cut your beard? in nature realistically. Young women are not attracted to beards usually and that's because they want to be together with a young guy. Of course, if you grow old together, as it should be in nature, your body is mature, then you will not find a beard unattractive. It will be natural for you and your partner to grow old together, as I said. That's why a woman who has been in many relationships and also has been single in between could of course find a beard attractive if she's older and that's because uh, that's how it naturally should be. But uh, if you want to attract uh, younger women, for whatever reason, then uh, you shouldn't grow a beard really at all. If you want it to be a little more conservative, do a low fade. If you want it to be more aggressive, do a high fade. But there's just something about a fade that looks aggressive and masculine. And I know that- I don't think so. And if you want to be attractive, then grow your hair really long. That's what all women find attractive. At the very least, longer than this statistically there's been uh, questionnaires about this so-called studies and women always find at least longer hair attractive uh, you can argue that it shouldn't cross the line or whatever there's gonna be some guys out there but i want to have long hair i like my long hairstyle there's guys out there who have long hair who get girls bro what about them yeah i know one guy's name's jason momoa he's got long flowy hair but he's also six six a famous hollywood actor yeah he's a good looking guy he would also look good with short hair, but uh, the long hair suits him very well. And that's because from my experience, all men that I have ever seen looked better with long hair compared to short hair. I have just never seen anybody who looks better with short hair. He's jacked, he's tattooed. And he's got a deep yeah, ass. Yeah, he's jacked and tattooed. And he has a deep voice. He has a deep voice because he's genetically gifted. That reminds me of the guy from Typo Negative. That's just what naturally biologically happens if you are born that way but if you're not then um, <laughs> getting tattoos being on steroids and trying to change your voice is in the long run not gonna help because you can't fake it if you're not naturally tall don't have high testosterone and um, don't have this uh, big frame. I totally get where this guy is coming from. His whole life revolves around compensation. Someday you will just have to admit to yourself that you are not like the guys that you look up to. Voice. So if you got all those other things in line, then, then sure, go get that long haircut, bro. Otherwise, come on, cut the shit. Like the longer hairstyles, by definition, are gonna look more feminine. If it's about- No, longer hair doesn't make you look more feminine. If anything, I would say it makes you look more masculine. About making yourself, you know, look happy when you look in the mirror, cool. But if it's about being more effective, not just with women, but also with men, when you meet a guy who has a more aggressive look, you're also gonna respect him more, then just make the effective decision. Now, if you're balding, you got two options. Get a hair transplant or just shave that shit off. There's nothing that screams like weak old man senile energy than a guy who has, I'm not talking about like a little bit of receding hairline, but you have like a really recessive balding starting to happen and you're holding on to those But again, you're talking about hiding the way you are genetically when it comes to the shaving off. That's what Andrew Tate does. If you were confident with the way you look like, not saying that it looks good if you have hair loss, then you would just leave it as it is. That's what a lot of men do. And uh, from my experience, women find it more attractive than a shaved head which still displays the hair loss, but you can still see that somebody has hair loss if they have a shaved head. You're just shaving it off nonstop because you're trying to hide it. Whereas if you get a hair transplant and you're just transplanting a hair from one place of your scalp to another one, that's different because you're just trying to look better. And of course, hair looks better than no hair, but the shaving off, uh, I don't think that that's a good idea at all. As hairs. Women don't think the old man senile energy is going to protect them and provide for them. And of course, balding's normal. There's nothing to be ashamed of if you're balding. The point is just to own- It's not normal, purely naturally speaking. Our ancestors messed up our genes. The guy on the left would look more attractive to most women because he's not trying to hide his hair loss. It would uh, appear as if he's more confident. This is what this video is all about. The way you kind of fake your appearance and attractiveness. Whereas the other guy is trying to hide his hair loss. He's not confident. 
about the way he looks like and seeing as this is what we are talking about in this video it's not a good suggestion own it like a man or, or get a hair transplant but you're not owning it like a man literally because you are trying to hide it that's anti-masculinity yes a hair transplant as i said is just you placing your hair somewhere else and if you have enough hair then you could absolutely do that but that's very different if you have very severe hair loss and then you try to hide it by shaving it off then you're literally hiding it <laughs> it's just something completely else and that's not confidence now with facial hair if you're clean shaven completely that makes you look younger and more innocent the opposite of someone who can protect and provide and obviously if you're someone who just can't grow facial hair well you can try the minoxidil cream i think a lot of people who have patchy hair that can help i wouldn't recommend that because minoxidil is a toxin you apply this toxin to whatever area and the hair is going to grow better because uh, there's going to be more blood flow more nutrients being transported to this area which does help with hair growth even if it's your beard but you're gonna get uh, dark eye circles from it, under eye bags, there's so many side effects. Over 50% of men experience dark eye circles and under eye bags from it, which is gonna make you look way more unattractive than the lack of a beard. And if you want to attract young women, then a beard is not gonna help anyway. Kind of, uh, you know, fill it in, make it look better. But if you can't grow any hair at all, not that's fine, man. Not a big deal. At the end of the day, optimize all these other things. And you're still going to be good. But if you can grow facial hair, then just make the easy decision and grow it out. Personally, I like keeping it kind of a shorter beard like this, kind of faded in from the side there. I like that. Keep the neck clean. That helps bring out the jawline more, that contrast between the beard hair and your skin tones. If you want to do something longer, you can do that as well. I don't think it's going to be as optimal. Some women are. A long beard can look pretty good. In nature, realistically, you would probably have a long beard. going to be into that, but that still fits the bill of having that hunter gatherer energy. And obviously, when it comes to your styling and your outfits, those should also be optimized to be a bit more aggressive and bring out your edge. That is why. Yeah, he shows, uh, I forgot the name of the footballer, who is, of course, good looking. <laughs> he just sometimes shows these good looking guys, Hollywood actors and whatnot, and then uh, talks about all of this stuff, which is unrelated to it. You are showing attractive guys. Of course, they will have success. We created the clothing brand Edge Lifestyle to help guys have, you know, simple, well-fitting options for their entire wardrobe that bring out this type of energy. I'd recommend you pick up a pair of... Nah, them. man, he's just selling you absolute nonsense. Again, um, a good businessman, men are going to fall for this, but uh, he doesn't want to help men whatsoever. You should talk about the black pill at least here and there, because that at least tells men the reality of what women find attractive, what men also find attractive, generally the way human attraction works and it's just not about this he gave some good advice here and there but um, it's all about faking it in the end number five do not be a follower look when you're trying to portray this leadership energy one thing you have to avoid is being like the tag along guy in the friend group who's always there but he never really has any opinion on what movie you guys are going to see or where you're going to eat dinner he's always just down for whatever he's go with the flow and this has nothing to do with being shy and not being super it's the same point as before essentially and of course this is true but again if you naturally had high testosterone, and especially if you were good looking and you would get good feedback all of your life about how attractive you are, then that's just how you naturally would be. This is what you would radiate. And if you are not attractive, you have low testosterone and so on, then you're gonna be faking it, forcing it. And again, this could somehow sometimes work for a one night stand, an actual relationship, for a woman to actually develop feelings of love towards you, Long term? No, because she's going to see right through it. I will talk to you in the next video. Stay beastly. Stay beastly. Is he implying that he's a beast? He's a guy who looks up to these men who are so-called genetic freaks. And he really wants to be like them, which is why he takes steroids, goes to the gym, has these tattoos, all of the stuff that he showed in the video. He's somebody who has had to compensate his whole life and now he wants to make you believe that you also don't need to be attractive because he never used to be attractive he still isn't but he found a way around it by imitating these men who he actually wants to be he wants to be those men so badly and he's trying to do anything to become like them and he knows that this is going to appeal to all of the other men who want to be like them and this video is called how to make women beg for s even if you're ugly but none of this would work if you're ugly they would still not be attracted to you some of this may work in some cases if you're average looking 
And it would only help you in the sense that you would be able to more likely get a one-night stand if you fake all of this. None of the girls would actually want to be together with you long term. All of this is about coping and compensating. That's just the only thing that I got out of this video. It's much better to look into black pill content, realize where you're at in life, and especially when it comes to women, and uh, deal with it, accept it. Don't try to hide everything and fake everything in everyday life. That's not gonna help you to find love because love is based on attraction. It's biochemical. You won't be able to fake it long-term anyway. Women fall in love with good genetics. You can't really do anything about it. That's just nature. Thank your ancestors for it. Go and thank your parents. But uh, don't fake your whole life. Don't compensate your whole life because that kind of a life is going to be miserable. Whereas if you accept reality, then you're at least gonna be somewhat happy. A lot happier than you will be if your whole life will revolve around faking it. Thanks for watching.